Hajime, JT McRoberts here with you once again, owner, operator of the Comic Book Dojo here in Comic Jutsu. Those of you that have been watching the channel the whole time will know, of course, that I am a longtime wrestling fan. I grew up watching wrestling in the days of Mid-South. Easily the roughest, toughest, hardest hitting wrestling federation in all of the territories. Yes, I was a WWF fan during the Hulk Hogan Ultimate Warrior era. Um, I got into NWA, Ric Flair when I moved into uh, the Charlotte area, Dusty Rhodes, of course, and eventually ECW. WWE pretty much killed all of my love for wrestling, and thankfully it was AEW that brought it back. So thank you for AEW. Um, I'm also a martial artist uh, with training in submission grappling, eight years of Jukaidu Jiu-Jitsu, six years of Helsing Gracie Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. So now that we've got that out of the way, I have to talk to you about Brawl In. All right, we already have uh, footage playing here on the left, so let me pause that for a second. And in fact, I'll back it up because um, I was briefly on CM Punk's side during all of this. I'll be honest with you, okay? When Brawl Out happened, I was completely on his side. If you don't believe me, go scrub my Twitter timeline rather than arguing with me here. I'm just trying to present what I see as uh, misrepresentations of what happened during Brawl In, okay? Because uh, CM Punk went on to brag that he had to defend himself from Jungle Jack Perry of all people, when who he then goes on to brag about being so non-threatening. So if he's non-threatening, but, you know, you were threatened and you had to defend yourself, those two don't quite match up, okay? So um, let's start at the beginning because I'm going to show you why, why Phil lost me during all of this, okay? He claims that he had to, well, he brags that he had to choke Jungle Jack just a little bit, and he was good because he didn't hit him. Okay, so here we go. Let's look at the footage. Here you see number one. All right, Phil walks right up into his face. He's way too close. Into the streets, this is already fighting territory. You can tell Jungle Jack doesn't know anything about fighting. He should have taken a step back, right? Were this me, um, I would have taken a step back. Fragile Phil keeps coming. He gets slapped in his jaws. That's how you have to handle that, okay? You can't let somebody close that fighting measure on you because if they're that close to you where they can reach out and touch you, just like Phil does to Jack here, uh, you set yourself up to be attacked. So they're talking. Uh, Jungle Jack actually even tries to move away from him a little bit here, and you can see Phil just inches closer to him. Again, he's already in the wrong. He walked all the way across the room. Jack is just coming off stage. The guy just had an exhausting match. What better time to pick a fight with somebody who you think can't fight, who's non-threatening? I mean, this is just pure bully mentality from Phil. Okay, so he walks up to him. Jack tries to edge away. Now Jack's like, yeah, well, what are you going to do about it whenever that comes out? Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. So they're jaw jacking back and forth, back and forth. You know, feels pretty tough with somebody who's tired after he just had a match. You know, nobody else is even paying attention to this. Here you see uh, Phil looks away like, what is he What is he looking for? What is he expecting? I guess he's just going to see, is anybody going to get in between them? Is somebody going to tell Jack not to talk to him? I mean, was, is he just expecting everyone to just kiss his ring in AEW? So here we go. Whatever they're saying to each other, cry me a river. I'm not going to cry you a river. Oh, yes, you are. Cry me a river. I'm not going to cry you. Okay, right there. He just put his hands on Jack. Jack's brushing his hair. The guy's clearly not going to attack him. Punk approached him. Now, on the Ariel Helwani show, which I'm well familiar with because I've watched the UFC from UFC 1, so... Anybody that wants to engage me in some sort of cordial debate, whether it be wrestling or mixed martial arts, I'm way ahead of you. You know, you're playing catch up to me. I've been doing this probably longer than a lot of you watching this have even been alive, okay? So he, he says you can't let somebody get close to him, but Phil is the one who walked up to him. He's the one who 
closed the gap, broke the fighting measure, closed the void, did all of these things that in fighting they don't they teach you not to do. That if you approach somebody like this, you are clearly going to fight. So here he is. He's he he's the one that gets into Jack's face, tries to bully him. Jack's brushing his hair. And he pushes him hard in the shoulder. I mean, that's, you know, that's basically a palm slap punch in the shoulder, pushing Jack back. <laughs> Jack reacts again to brush his hair back. And Phil pushes e forward even more. So Jungle Jack has no choice but to try to do something. So he, he tries to push in for a double leg, a horrible double leg, mind you. Okay. And here's where Phil grabs him from the front around the head. That's fine. You know, Phil had plenty of mixed martial arts training, right? The problem is he trained in a great dojo under great teachers um, at the Duke Rufus gym. But if you go back to that time period, which I was paying attention to it because Phil came into the UFC, you know, I was already watching it. Um, the, uh, the, the people there that trained at the gym said he never trained with them. He never went out and did sparring with them. He never came out and did grappling with them. You know, so here you are in a gym filled with champions. You've got the welterweight champion. You've got lightweight champion at the time. You're not even getting in there and sparring with him. That alone shows problems with his ego. Okay, That's a major ego problem because part of training is just learning to get your butt kicked and taking it. And that's how you come back stronger and better than ever. But Punk never did that. That's why you saw him get beaten horribly inside the cage in the UFC. And uh, that's why I know that his submission skills are not what he says they are. So here he is grabbing Jack in a front headlock. Yes, this is a front headlock, okay? But after he has instigated all of the action, he could have talked to him from 10 feet away. He could have had this whole conversation from 5 feet away. He's the one who walked up to him. He's the one that pushed him. He's the one that forced Jack to defend himself and then grabbed him from the front, okay? Now here he's holding him in the front, 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 holding him in the front. Let They're pe peeled apart. You see CM Punk even punches at his body, or maybe he's even punching at his head. That You see that, that right hand flash out there. So he attacks him again. Jack should have pressed charges on him, honestly. Um, you know, the whole reason I'm doing this is because... CM Punk's fans want to brag, oh, he beat up, yeah, Jack Perry's a big wuss. Well, if he's a wuss, why was CM Punk so threatened by him? Do you ask yourself that? Why exactly was he so threatened by him? Because he's such a big wuss. Okay, so there you saw him uh, lunge at the people behind the monitors. He walks around the screen and grabs Tony Khan. Okay, so here we go. Now I broke it all down for you. I'm sure you still don't believe me because... Most of you that are fans of CM Punk, you don't know anything about wrestling outside the WWE era, which is easily one of the worst eras of wrestling. If you're a fan of it, I'm okay with that. Go ahead, go enjoy it. All right now, I enjoy AEW. Not all of it, mind you, but the pieces that I do enjoy, I enjoy a lot. So let's show you what a real guillotine choke looks like, because this is basically what CM Punk is claiming that he did, but he didn't do it. Okay, he let um, people like um, Pat McAfee say, yeah, you guillotined him and, and cheerlead him on in like typical bully mentality. You know, for somebody that, that wants to virtue signal about how righteous they are all the time, CM Punk, you know, why why do you want to cater to this bully mentality? You know, it's re really the opposite of the image that you say that you're presenting. Okay, so let's go back to UFC 2. Um, I didn't actually watch this live, mind you. But here we see uh, Pat Smith. Very, very similar to what we just watched with Jack and, Jack and CM Punk, right? Here we see Pat Smith. He grabs Johnny Rhodes. Um... Around the neck, here you see Rhodes attempting a very poor double leg takedown again. Uh, Pat Smith defends it by grabbing the head, and then he applies the guillotine choke. Now, let's see if you can tell the difference of what happened here. Right there. You see the difference? Pat Smith is standing straight up, straight up, applying pressure to the neck. Okay? That is what a chokehold looks like. That is what a guillotine chokehold looks like. Now, if CM Punk had said he had done a he front cranked them, or uh, there are a couple other chokes you can do that are advanced, 
I'm not even going to tell you what they are because I don't believe he even knows what they are. I've seen the guy fight in the UFC. There's nothing advanced about his technique. It is basic at the best. Maybe he has an understanding of fundamentals. I will give him that. But he's not an advanced submission artist. He's just an advanced smack talker. Here you see choke being applied. See how he's leaning back, arching his back, applying pressure to the neck. And Johnny Rose has no choice but to tap. And he's actually tapping with his foot down here. Ref breaks it. Okay. And they're separated. Okay, let's go back to Fragile Phil here. So again, he approaches, closes the gap. He's already in the wrong. Okay, and and this is disappointing because I was on his side for Brawl Out. I really was. When You can go back and check out my timelines. They said the Young Bucks kicked in his door, hurt his dog. I was on his side. I was like, hurt my dog? Yes, I will smack you in the face. I will hit you. I will watch my buddy hit you with the chair, all of these things, okay? But here he's in the wrong. Here he's the one that approaches Jack, okay? Here he's the one that puts his hands on Jack first. Here he's the one that shows for all of his smack talk, hey, Dwayne, you're Vince's puppet, for all of his smack talk, that his ego is the smallest, the, the most fragile of all of them, okay? He couldn't even take a guy saying something during a show that he had to go attack him during the show. He couldn't even talk to him about it like a man later. If it even came to that, it's not like Jack turned to the camera and said, Hey, see him, punk, cry me a river. Yeah, he didn't even name him. Didn't even name him. But, you know, Captain Ego here, um, he, he just couldn't even take it. So let's look at this again. Punk's already in the wrong. He's closed the gap. He's in Jack's face. Jack edges back. He moves forward. Punk is looking around. I think he's weighing in his head right here. Like, is anybody here what this guy is saying to me? Like, I'm gonna, I'm just going to smack him. He's not going to talk to me like this. Like, he can't even take a little bit of back talk. So, Jack is fixing his hair, and that's when he attacks him. Okay, so here, grabs him from the front, just like I showed you. But look at his back. Completely arched. His back is not straight up. He's not applying a choke. He's just holding his head. Back is arched, not applying a choke. He's just holding his head. Back is arched. Look, he's even, he's bent down even further. Back is arched. He's not applying a choke. He's holding his head. Then when the other people peel them apart, he stands up straight and hits Jack one more time. So there you have it. CM Punk lied. He was in the wrong. He's not willing to admit it. He'd rather virtue signal to people as long as cameras are on to show you how uh, what a great person that he is. But behind closed doors, he's weak. He's very weak, and he doesn't know submissions. I hate to be the one to tell you that. But anyway, hopefully you learned something from watching this. You know, there's nothing wrong with two guys getting together and fighting it out, but if you're going to pick your time and your place when somebody's just had a match, you want to catch them when they're weak, you know, that's a straight-up BS move. And, uh, yeah, it shows you exactly what CM Punk is. He's weak. He's fragile. He's a virtue signaler. And uh, until he admits he was wrong and actually apologizes to Jack Perry, just can't be a fan of his anymore. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed this breakdown here in the Comic Book Dojo. Uh, buy my graphic novel, subscribe to the channel, like, comment, subscribe. I'm sure a lot of people will be disagreeing with me down below. But, um, you know, feel free to express yourself. Don't worry, I won't come out of the screen and attack you like Punk just did Jack.